This is Echo 3, and let's discuss rendezvous and docking. There are other good tutorials on this topic, so this tutorial will be less focused on the basics and instead look at more complex scenarios. Let's start by setting our target for rendezvous. Here we have a small station in low orbit that is inclined by 10 degrees. The desert launch site is currently crossing through the station's orbital plane, so we are in a good launch window. Because the station is in an inclined orbit, Jeb and Val will not be launching due east or 90 degrees, but instead be aiming 10 degrees off that. Launching towards 80 degrees on the nav ball will put them in the same orbital plane as the station. Station rendezvous will be simplified because there will be no inclination changes for which to account. The target is ahead of the capsule, so Jeb and Val need to put themselves into a faster orbit in order to catch up with the station. Right clicking on the maneuver node brings up the subsequent orbit button. Using it makes setting up maneuvers easier. A 43 meter per second burn will give them a closest approach of just over three kilometers. By doing a few small maneuvers about one minute away from this point will result in the two crafts getting very close to one another. More on these maneuvers will be discussed later in this tutorial. As the two craft get closer and closer together, Jeb will need to quit looking at the map view and start looking more out his window to focus on where the two craft are in relation to each other. Once the two craft are about one kilometer away from each other, it is a good idea to switch away from the map mode and visually watch the targeted craft. This is also helpful so that Jeb doesn't get too close to the other craft again. On PC, the bracket keys will also switch between the crafts that are in physics range. Having the two sets of docking ports target one another makes docking a little easier. Jeb likes to use the nerve engines to reduce the relative velocity and only uses the RCS thrusters for the final precise maneuvers. The only RCS fuel in this craft are the 30 units in the pod. After topping off their tanks at the station, Jeb and Val are ready to depart for the next phase of their mission. They will be visiting a station in orbit around Duna. This means setting up an interplanetary ejection burn. The ideal time to depart Kerbin for Duna is when Duna is 45 degrees ahead of Kerbin. Jeb and Val are leaving just a little early. I guess Val is wanting to get this mission over with. Maybe she's not as fond of Jeb's humor as I am. It is hard to overemphasize the need to carefully time and plot interplanetary maneuvers. In this case, being a little early is costing the mission an extra 300 meters per second of Delta V. There are online tools and mods like Kerbal alarm clock that help with the planning of these maneuvers. By watching the closest approach markers as they set up their maneuver, they are able to get a pretty good ejection burn. Once Val has almost finished the burn, she likes to disable the maneuver and finish the burn herself while watching the closest approach markers. While the ejection burn itself didn't result in an encounter in Duna's sphere of influence, the two can still get there without difficulties. One short maneuver in interplanetary space and they are on an intersect course with the orbit of Duna and its station. The Oberth effect means that it is more efficient to combine the ejection burn and the transfer burn. So typically, burns in solar orbit should only be used for small adjustments. Val magnificently pilots the craft into an intersect course with the orbit of the Duna station. Because the station's orbit is perpendicular to the craft, Val has to be precise in order to get them there. After many long days in the capsule, Val plots an orbital insertion burn at the point the two orbits intersect. This craft is capable of aerobraking, but with all of this delta V, Val would rather use it instead of getting a little sweaty. The insertion burn doesn't need to circularize, and in this case, it is typically better not to. Jeb and Val need to make a pretty substantial inclination burn. Here, the ascending node is the furthest out, so an anti-normal burn will be made there. Once the two craft are in the same orbital plane, rendezvous can proceed as normal. Well, as normal as anything can when you're dealing with Jebediah. At the periapsis, Val will burn retrograde so that the two orbits will intersect. It looks like they are going to get a fairly close encounter with the station on their first pass close to Duna. As the two prepare to rendezvous with the station, let's take a look at the nav ball. Currently, orbit is set as the reference point. Val will switch the reference point over to the targeted station as they get close. Other important icons indicate the direction of the target, 
the retrograde movement relative to the target and the anti-target marker, or the opposite direction from the target. At the intersection point, the two craft will still be over 83 kilometers away. Jeb is getting a little cramped in the capsule. Maybe he needs to stretch or just not be near Valentina and her passive-aggressive remarks. In either case, Jeb is going to force this encounter. By pointing the craft on the target side of the retrograde marker, he will simultaneously get closer and decrease the relative velocity. He likes to imagine a line running through the target, retrograde, and anti-target markers. His rendezvous maneuver burns will be focused along this line. You can see he was able to get a very close encounter with the station and set himself up for an easy time docking. The craft is now headed directly for the station. Jeb quickly decreases their relative velocity. Again, it is handy to have the station pointing its docking port directly towards the capsule. Flipping the craft around and a few tiny puffs of monoprop and the pod is now safely docked to the station. Jeb decides it's time to go on a little spacewalk and make sure everything is okay. Thanks for watching. Let's discuss orbital rendezvous and docking.